Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, this will be part 368R. We're reviewing a lesson that we initiated Sunday. Now, lesson title is Prototokus Restoration. This will be part two of our series. <clears throat> Scripture teaches when the heavens are liberated they will be moved to rejoice in their newfound freedom. We spoke in the last lesson that the liberation of the heavens is not going to come uh, simultaneously but it is going to be protracted over a protracted period of time in each liberated group of heavens is going to experience its liberation uniquely from the other group. Example, Psalms 50 verses 4 to 6 He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he might judge his people. This refers to the first example of the move of God as it relates directly to the prototokis. Those that are in the heavens that have gone on and are resting in eternity are going to be called to earth with the Lord as he descends to earth to receive their rewards. So he calls each group of heavens in which a prototokius inheritor resides for that heaven to release the saints to accompany the Lord as he descends to the earth. So we see, it says, He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he might judge his people. This is the judgment of Jeremiah 25, verse 30. What we call the beginning of sorrows. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. When the Lord appears, He's going to appear in a cloud, seen by everybody, and descend to the earth to reward the teachers, to judge the recalcitrant. Notice what it goes on to say. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. The heavens are going to see the beginning of the liberation of the creation. It's the first stage. These heavens aren't being liberated. They're already liberated because they contain the saints who have uh, overcome. But what they're rejoicing in is that they know that it is now started that the creation is going to observe the move of God from now on which will end in its total liberation and in that they are rejoicing Psalms 89 verse 5 to 7 well, this is another example of the heavens being liberated in them rejoicing And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, 
Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. <clears throat> so what we find here, that the scripture is showing us, the heavens are going to observe the progress of the liberation of the creation and they are going to rejoice some directly some over others that have been liberated and their rejoicing is indirect yes he said that each verse represents a different area of the heavens mm -hmm. can we identify where this area is um It doesn't give you a specific, but it could refer to the primary creation. But the primary, well, I guess the primary creation would also be true. Sure, yes, definitely. Sense. There's no liberation here directly, Sure. but they're observing the Lord moving, right. and as a result, liberation taking place, and they're greatly rejoicing. Sure. <clears throat> And here again, it's also talking about who can be compared. So, the lower heavens, there is no, he wouldn't ask this question because the Lord would stand out beyond anything. The primary creation, when you look at the Prototokos sons, the Lord stands out as the elder brother. So, it's more than likely referring to the primary creation here. Okay. Isaiah 43 Sing, O ye heavens, <clears throat> for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. <clears throat> for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. <clears throat> this would refer to the latter part of the Father's liberation because it's including the neither regions of earth. This would refer to the latter part of the tribulation period where the heavens are observing the <coughs> move of the Prototokos headed by the Lord in sweeping through areas that were dominated by the Luciferians and totally liberating them, freeing them up. The heavens are greatly impressed. And it also would include the earth, which is undergoing liberation. <clears throat> On this confession I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So it's talking about the neither parts being under assault by the Prototokos and the gates being demolished and, and the, uh, the the sons of God going in and liberating regions in the subterranean. All well, this is the latter part of the tribulation period. Revelation 12, verse 7 to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. These heavens, 
they are a, you made this statement, they are impressed. Mm -hmm. now, Mr. Jones, I've never heard that ever following the statement about the heavens. Okay, so they're impressed. <coughs> it, gives, it gives a personality, not just a, an entity statement, an entity, it's a living creature, okay? Mm -hmm. But it actually has a, a mannerism, if you will, holy, I guess is the best way to explain mm -hmm. it, but the, the being impressed, I understand they are joyful because of the liberation. Okay, now that's easier for me to, to compose a, uh, a concept in my mind, but the impressed thing gives it a different level of comprehension. And I Everything that the Father creates has sentient ability across the spectrum of being able to manifest emotion. Mm -hmm. And therefore intelligence to one degree or another. Each one unique. Mm. They've never seen this before. This is something the Father's reserved <clears throat> for the latter time. They've never seen it, but they've been told about it. Yeah, but being told about it and, and experience it two different things. It's the thing of it is, Jonesy, it's not a blind sight, just there it is. It wasn't there, now it is. It's, oh, it's, that's what it looks like. It's comprehending something that you never had the ability to perceive of. You can be told about something or somebody. you got a picture in your mind of what that's about. But when you actually see it and experience it, it puts you into a whole different comprehension state. So, because of the way you just now said it, is there a, an opportunity, or not a possibility that the heavens are impressed, but way more impressed because they had a concept of impression that was much smaller than it actually ends up being. In other words, God, God never fits in any kind of containment. Here's God. No, he, he's outside of everything. So, you, you're going you're gonna to experience you know, bliss and peace and love and joy. But until you actually do experience it, it's not going to be conceivable to put words to it. Exactly. When you say impressed, <clears throat> the heavens are waiting for the liberation. What does that mean? They have a concept. They don't know the Father's master plan. The heavens and the inhabitants of the heavens are intensely interested in how things are going to happen, when they're going to happen. They have no clue. They have an idea. The human race has no clue. The angels have no clue. The scripture tells us when the Father moves, the whole creation is going to be in awe when he showcases his master plan master plan because they're going to see the beginning <clears throat> to the end and things happen and they're going to understand why things happen but they're not going to be prepared until they actually experience these things and when they experience these things they're going to be in awe and wonder yes I use the word impressed but not in the sense of somebody acknowledging something that they didn't expect. I'm talking about it in terms of the person totally being floored right. in uh, the comprehension of something they didn't expect to the degree that they are experiencing it. When we remember that at the point that Elohim spoke out the creation, obviously it was pure, it's pristine. So they have had some experience, and I'm sure that it may be, in that state. So I'm thinking about the heavens groaning, wanting to be back in that state or in a greater state. Mm -hmm. Because they, they haven't had the period <coughs> necessary mm -hmm. to be exactly what they've been created to be. Yes, yes. Even in the unfallen regions, there, are they groaning in the unfallen regions? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Because then nothing is allowed to operate to its fullest degree. Right. And in this respect, again, we have to understand this is going to be the essence and the quintessence of the ob an object lesson that the Father is going to showcase. Mm. And when he does, they are going to be literally floored by what
what they experience. Yes, they got to be very much impressed by <coughs> events taking place. Each time my heaven is liberated, they got to be impressed. Because they don't know how the liberation is going to take place. They don't know the extent of it. We're looking here at Revelation 12. <laughs> 7 to 12. <coughs> And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought in his angels. This is the heavens that the dragon tail forces took over the time of the rapture. This is the heavens where the Luciferians set up their mercantile system, transported all these millions of humans to operate in it. And ultimately, suddenly, this is sudden, war is going to break out. Why? Because Michael is going to be summoned to kick these guys out. Suddenly. When is this going to happen? After a period of persecution and repentance on the part of the inhabitants that have been taken there. Yes. One, in one fell swoop, the father is going to say, that's it, they repented, you're out of here. Michael, go on. War in heaven takes place. Mr. Jones, let me speak it out. Yes. Okay, so we have this guy, Lucifer. He, he's got these humans working in his mercantile system. They're, they're making things, they're building things, this and that and the other. It's all a bunch of busyness. And, and, and that's what he wants? I mean, Mr. Jones, Obviously, he doesn't know there's an e, e peronios, but the, the thing of it is, is Mr. Jones, the, the manifestation of things growing in the in, in proper manner are one being is enhancing another being, enhancing the other beings. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's better to give than to receive. So that's, that's what's engineered within our makeup. This guy's making stuff and it's not, and it's like, what's... I don't, it, it's amazing to me that a spiritual being can, or a, a strong spiritual being, can be, that's the, the extent of his goal. I mean, Jones, it, it makes zero sense. Because you're looking at it from God's perspective, not from Lucifer's perspective. From Lucifer's perspective, he's motivated by the same thing these people down here are motivated by. Control, yes. power. Oh, yes. He owns the mercantile system. He determines what's going to be brought forth. Everything has to come to and through him. That's where he gets his joy, if you want to call it. His pride. And nothing to do with godliness, no. godly living. You're looking at the negative side of the register here. He cannot say, I am that I am. No, but what he can try to say is, I am like the Most High. Mm. That's his goal. I'm able to do well, things. Says that he does that. I am I'm like able the, to do the things time. the way God does things. That's right. what he. He's not interested in saying being a reality personified. Right. Right. He's interested in controlling everything. Right. Tricking other people. Yeah, so he wants he total. Like he does not want to. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> nailed to be nailed into a frame of anything without his knowing it right. and his approving it. Right. That's where he operates like the most high. Jesus said, A bird can't fall from a tree without your father acknowledging it or permitting it. That's what Lucifer wants. Right. But of course, he's operating in delusion. Of course, he's a narcissist. But he's in darkness. You can't yes. expect anything else from him. Yes. He's outside of reality. <coughs> so there's no truth in him. He can't comprehend truth. And in and in that, you you've laid the foundation for <coughs> his inability to achieve anything. Having, as it says in verse uh, ten and eleven, having humans running around the heavens doing things in his behalf. That's not an achievement. No. They've, they've, they've had to be tricked, stolen, beaten, you know, to get to that point. That's not an achievement at all. That's ludicrous. From an objective perspective, right. it's not. From his perspective, it is. It's his game plan. He wants everybody running around, <coughs> answering to sure. him. Sure. It doesn't mean it has nothing to do with productive 
operation, right. productive experience, something that grows, something that matures. Right. That's not something in that his benefits. game plan. Yes. <clears throat> in his game plan, he expects things to die, mm. be killed off. He could care less. It's a murderer. Jesus said that. He's only interested in power and control. But you see, what you've just described cannot perpetuate. Because if, it, if it's not replaced and cultivated to any degree, it will end at some point. That's what you have here, yeah. your own system. Yeah. It doesn't last, it can't last. It, by its own operation, it's going to destroy mm. itself. He doesn't care. Because in his own mind, he can perpetuate infinitely new realities, if you will, pseudo-realities, sure. if you will. You get a dictator rise up, mm -hmm. dictator gets killed, no problem to him. He's got another one right here. She's going to do this. That's why after World War I ended and everybody thought, it's all over. No more wars. Oh, you don't think so? Right. 20 years later, here's Hitler. They got rid of Hitler. Stalin <clears throat> was still around, but not so hot. Well, here's Mao Zedong. So you got the Korean conflict. It never ends because they keep resurrecting new pseudo realities mm. everything is expendable to them nothing's they don't expect anything to endure so it's an illusion what we find verse 9 <clears throat> the great red dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth his angels were cast out with him and heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brother and is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. So you have this war which takes place after the persecution, great martyrdom. <clears throat> after the great martyrdom, the war takes place and the guys that perpetuated the martyrdom, the persecution, are kicked out of heaven, and heaven is now liberated. <clears throat> Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. <clears throat> so the region in which these people dwelt is a sentient being. <clears throat> leveled. It says, Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. There is an understanding of the heavenly perspective is an understanding of the perspective of the inhabitants of the heavens. They're both told to rejoice over what happened. So, these in verse um, 11 <coughs> are residing under the dragon's influence in what will become the wilderness. No. Verse 11, <coughs> they're dead. They're not in the heavens. They're in another area of heaven. The heavens that they're in conduct compulsory physical existence. They have died. They've been persecuted, killed. Okay. Before they died, when they were still alive, yeah. where were they? Here, in the heavens. Which is where? In a region beyond the earth, a stratified region over the earth. But not in, what, not in the area that will become the wilderness. Lower earth will be. Wilderness lower. already exists. Okay, so not in the wilderness. This is right. a different area. This would be a lot like the yeah, lower the earth. Wilderness earth. you're talking about is where the woman is. Yes. That was a wilderness at the time of the rapture. Okay. This is far after the rapture. It's not a wilderness, it's been liberated. And, and now. Taken and, by the Patoticus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's so this is below part of the that. restoration, huh? Right, I'm just trying to fix on it. This is below that, the area which is now taken over by the churches. No, it's above. The area that's below this is the wilderness region, astral plane. Okay. If you will, <clears throat> where the woman is, where she's gone from one place for three and a half years to another place three mm -hmm. and a half years. It's all spiritual. These heavens accommodate physical, corporeal 
bodies of people right. so they what, can be killed. Okay. So what you just call all spiritual is above where, wherever these people are because they're, they're not dead. Well, now they're dead, but before they were dead, they were physical. No. The region that these people are in are above the astral plane okay. that is the desert. Okay. What happens the, the devil is cast out of this higher region down to the astral plane and he sees the woman down there starts to persecute her again. She flees to another place. So that's the astral level just above. It's in the earth environs, therefore. These are higher regions that are above those because he's cast down to a lower region. You just read it. Rejoice, she happens where the devil is cast down right over the earth. Well, he's cast down to the region where the woman is. And he goes after her. And she flees to another region. It's all astral region just above the earth. Just above the physical solid globe, if you will. So the area where Michael cast him out from mm -hmm. would have been where the star group are now. Right, okay. Yes, <clears throat> which is a higher region. <clears throat> so you have what I call lower regions, actual plane, intermediate regions where the star group is, higher regions. The, the humans are taken to the intermediate region, which supports corporeal life, okay. working in the Luciferian grist mill for some determined period of time. They're killed in that region, some of them, not all of them, sure. <clears throat> martyred, their spirits gravitate to a higher spiritual plane. And is that the highest level that physical beings can inhabit? Because the next level is the y 3 h level. Physical beings cannot inhabit that level. Right. Because that, I guess, would be the beginning of what you would call apparatus. Yes. No. Okay. Yes. So, verse 12, Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. <coughs> Higher heavens, talking to the lower heavens. The ones that are told, Rejoice, ye heavens, are in the heaven of heavens, around the throne, calling the shots of things taking place in the tribulation era. The the heaven, this is the heaven of heavens. The one, the voice is coming out. Right, okay. The heaven of heavens. Okay. The heavens that they're talking to are the intermediate level right. that Satan's been cast out of. They're told <clears throat> to rejoice, and then they further talk down to the earth, astral plane, lower physical plane. It says, Woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Now notice 13 that when the dragon saw he was cast into the earth he's not cast down to the ground the surface level he's cast down to the astral plane right. level. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child so he sees her that's where she's been the wilderness region so you have these levels. She's at the wilderness region where, why? Where she can minister to her children still on the earth. You notice that? Verse 17. The dragon was wroth with a woman and went to make war with a remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the surface world. That's why she stays in the astral region. They're her children. She's there to nurture them. They are repentant. They're the saints that are being persecuted at the tribulation period on the surface world. So you're getting a picture of these levels. The surface world astral plane, lower level of the higher heavens, and then on up, 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 till you get to the heaven of heavens, and beyond that you have Eperanios. That's basic 
the basic stratified um, uh, picture that we're getting. Now, <clears throat> I want you, we're going to go into a, I turn to Revelation, the 18th chapter first. Revelation 18, verse 4 to 5. Excellent. Revelation 18, verse 4 to 5. <clears throat> now, this is another example of liberation in a different group of right. heavens. Right. <clears throat> and I heard another voice from heaven. Now, this is this voice is coming out of the heaven of heavens. It's a prototokos. <clears throat> I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that she be not partakers of her sins, that she receive not <clears throat> of her plagues. <clears throat> <clears throat> For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. <clears throat> now, we establish this voice is coming from the heaven of heavens. Mm -hmm. Drop down <clears throat> to verse 20, same chapter. Yes. Rejoice over her, thou heaven. Higher heaven, talking to a lower heaven. <clears throat> And ye holy apostles and prophets, holy apostles and prophets that are dwelling in this heaven. Just like Revelation 12, <clears throat> verse 7, Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Different group of heavens. This is another group of heavens. Is this a group of heavens still within the star group level? Or is it below it? It would be <coughs> commensurate with it on okay. the same level, okay. but in a different stratified sure. group. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye apostles, all the apostles and prophets that are dwelling in it, for God hath avenged you on her. It's another heavens <coughs> in which you've had persecution on the earth, all its city has butchered apostles and prophets on the surface world they go into a heaven it's a spiritual heaven the harlot city is now wiped out so the prototokos in the highest heaven is telling the heaven in which these apostles and prophets are dwelling to rejoice and he's also telling them to rejoice because the people that kill you killed you are now under judgment so you get these groups of heavens being liberated different times in different ways and in different locations going on to liberate the entire creation why then do we see <coughs> Revelation 6, I believe. It might be Revelation 5. No, Revelation 6. A group who have been martyred who tell the Father, when are you going to you know, take revenge for <coughs> our death? Why don't they see other groups saying the same thing? Because of the conditions. The other groups are all robed. These aren't. The other groups come directly up to a heaven. Mm. These are under the altar because they're naked. They've got no covering. So are they saying, when are you going to take revenge because they have to wait and uh, acclimate? Is that that's the reason that they're saying? Sure. Mm. They can't go anywhere until they get robes. So in other words, they want to speed up that period of time. Well, they want revenge on the people. They can see basically from down into the earth and see what's going on. And so they see evil continuously going, other people being butchered. Right. These apostles and prophets haven't even been killed yet. They're asking for... When is he going to revenge them? This is all the city that killed the, the first group. Okay. Yes. Okay. <coughs> when will they get their robes? Well, they get their robes at the next part of Scripture. <coughs> but they, when they get their robes, they're told to rest. Mm. Rest. As, as 
So that your brothers, as they've, as they've done, rest until they get martyred the same way right. you got martyred. Yes. So there's a protracted period of time. Mm. <coughs> Again, illustrating the point, the heavens don't get liberated all at the same time. Okay. Now, I want you to turn to Isaiah 51, because you have to see this to understand the next principle. Isaiah 51, <clears throat> verse 6. <clears throat> Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Now the heavens that these are talking about is the <clears throat> darkness veil over the earth, the mourning cloth, if you will, called by <clears throat> the scientists a space-time continuum. Okay. That has to be done away with before the majority of the restoration can take place. Why? Because God is going to make judgments in which <coughs> that the timing, uh, the usefulness of the, this veil mechanism no longer exists. Of all the heavens that will be destroyed, I'm not talking about the restoration, I'm talking about the, the, the destruction. Of all the heavens that will be destroyed, is this towards the end of that destruction? the well mechanism. Is this like essentially the last thing that will be removed? No. It's practically the first the thing. The first thing, okay. When we see the Father looking down, uh, Revelation 13, when we see the beast shaking his fist at the Father, that constitutes one of the first groups of the heavens that are being destroyed. When you see the beast looking at, <coughs> shaking his fist, this has happened. Okay. Okay. <coughs> What will happen is <clears throat> the conditions of the space-time continuum, the vacuum of space, the void, is no longer there. Conditions are radically going to change on the Earth. Uh, there's going to be a time in which <clears throat> the <clears throat> what Jesus called the regeneration at that point is going to be prepared. In other words, the restoration of the entire creation is going to be set in motion but before that happens <coughs> tremendous destruction has got to take place throughout the creation okay. but all the ones that we've read so far mm -hmm. don't they happen before this yes okay yes <coughs> so what you're looking at what we just read with all that was preliminary right preliminary now we're going to go to the <clears throat> next principle here. Scripture teaches the restoration will involve placing the earth back into its orbit around the sun and reestablishing the heavens back in their places. In other words, you're going to have these few heavens liberated, but then you're going to have the rest of the creation wiped out. Turn to Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, we're going to read verses 1 to 13. <clears throat> the bird of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift up a banner upon the high mountain, Exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles, 
I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. It's Prototokos. <clears throat> the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations, gathered together the Lord of hosts, mustereth the host of the battle. <clears throat> this is referring to the elder group, which are going to reign as kings. It's referring to the angelic group that are going to reign as sovereign instructors. <clears throat> He's preparing them for the destruction of the whole creation. Let's read. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. They come from the end of heaven of heavens. Mm -hmm. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, every man's heart shall melt. <clears throat> this is not just referring to Luciferians. Uh, the humans is referring to Luciferians are going to shake and tremble. And their pride is going to wipe out. They shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Melt <clears throat> their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. <clears throat> For the stars of heaven and the consolations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. The moon shall not cause a light to shine. And I will punish, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man in the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, 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 I will shake the heavens. And the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as a chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. There shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. The earth is going to be kicked out of its orbit. It's called careening through. If, <clears throat> if, the, the void had still been here, all life would be wiped out because it would be exposed to the vacuum of space, no longer be able to support. But that's taken away. So the earth, although it's tumbling through the regions, life is still supported. You have the heavens at this point, in their reality, and everything in the creation is going to be uprooted and totally in disarray. Let's continue. We've only started. Isaiah 51, verse 16. No, we didn't. Isaiah 51, 16. <clears throat> and I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee with the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens. The word plant here is strike in. It means reconstruct the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. This creation, secondary creation is going to have to 
totally be <coughs> reconstructed before the Father is through with this thing. I'm picturing a lump of clay and just makes a different vessel out of it. Well, the sons are going to restore it back to a better condition than it was at the beginning. Because the heavens were never, the, the, the creation was never given a chance to fully function because of the Luciferian <coughs> nonsense that they brought forth. We're not through yet. Turn to, well, this next principle. When the, when the blackness covering surrounding the earth, the space-time garment, is removed, the earth will again come into the conditions for its restoration. The life-giving waters of the great fountain in the heavens will be opened. Isaiah 35, verses 4 to 7. Say to them that of a fearful heart, <clears throat> Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Verse 7, And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. The earth is going to regenerate through the conditions that will be released after <coughs> the heavens are wreckage. We read that in the first lesson Sunday. Heavens, fear this. Be terribly afraid because right. you're going to be wasted. Mm. Well, this is going to take place. Regeneration takes place after everything else is done out, done in. Mm. Because evil has to be totally eradicated. Mm. Now, I want to ask a question mm -hmm. regarding the incoming reality of the beginning of sorrows. The implication I have is that those who are righteous and have medical difficulties, medical problems, this, that, and other. Those things will be restored at that point. I'm not talking about the restoration of everything that we've just read. I'm just talking about those who will be used at the beginning of sorrows, the protective saints. If they have medical conditions of some form, will they be restored to any degree at the point of the incoming reality? Uh... Not necessarily, okay. because at the beginning of sorrows, we are still qualifying mm. for our inheritance. So, and you're going to have to go and undergo some kind of affliction. Okay. Some may be physical, some may be spiritual. So then it wouldn't be until, well, at least for the priests, until the end of the gathering, for that to happen. All right. Now I'm going to give you some examples of the restoration. Like I said, this may be a, pri a little prolonged. We got time, Brother Richard. Okay. <clears throat> Page three. Scripture teaches Scripture teaches, with the departure of the darkness covering, the glorious light of the great central sun will manifest to destroy those of darkness and free those of righteousness. Turn to Job, 38th chapter, we want verse 12. Mm -hmm. 
Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know its place? The word morning comes from a Hebrew term, bokir. <coughs> this is the name the Father uses for the great central sun. It's called the morning. Day spring. The day spring is the light that comes from this great central sun. Turn to Genesis, first chapter, verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater, this is the, this is the great central sun, to rule the day. The lesser, this is a light you can't see, won't be able to see until <coughs> the departure of the um, morning cloth. The lesser light, to rule the night, the stars also. Here, go back to Job 38. Now here he's talking about the great central sun. Going to start in verse 12 again. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, caused the day spring to know its place? In other words, have you commanded this great central sun? Do you direct its light? Now he's going to focus on the light, <clears throat> verse 13. That it, the light, might take hold of the ends of the earth. In other words, spread to the entirety of the earth and that the wicked might be shaken out of it. This light is going to drive off the earth the wicked. <clears throat> How's that going to happen? Turn to Malachi, fourth chapter, verse 1 to 4. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. In other words, nobody will reproduce <coughs> that is under judgment in this land. It's going to wipe out life, um, lifelines. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness, call the morning, arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. This great central sun... <coughs> after the departure of the <coughs> bail mechanism, after the destruction of the universe, and everything that blocks off the righteousness of God. In other words, there'll be a time you can look right up into the heavens, all the way up to the Father. That's the time the conditions are set in for this to take place. So anything on righteous is just burnt into righteous. By the light of the great central sun. But it's also going to install healing to any affliction, any infirmity. So everything is going to be brought to a higher level of existence on the earth. 
This isn't even the heavens. Right. This is the restoring of the earth and the environment. Between the great central sunlight, the waters of the great deep, and other things, everything is going to be reconfigured back to the way it was in its right. original pure state. So the lame man leaping is as a result of the central sun? No, that's a result of the opening of the great, great wellspring. Remember, so the, the well space-time continuum wiped out. Mm -hmm. So what you have, you can see the, 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 the great wellspring. You can see the heavens. You can't see the great central sun at this point because the creation hasn't been destroyed. Darkness hasn't been totally obliterated. The heavens are still operating when the beast is shaking his fist at God. But all that is going to come. He says the heavens are going to be thrown out of whack. The earth is spinning through the environment. It's going to be brought back to a stability. The foundation has got to be reestablished. The heavens have got to be replanted. Sons of God are going to do all that. So the question still is, what causes the lame man to be leaping at the, the point? waters of the great the waters? Well. So they bring healing as well. Okay. Yes, like I said, you have the great central sun. You have the great wellspring. You have other things that are also going to attribute to the restoration of the right. creation okay. back to what so This really is one elongated period. We shouldn't look at it as individual events. Yes. Protracted period in which the enemies of the Lord are going to be put down. <clears throat> Stability is going to be brought to the creation. And then it's going to be restored to its fullness. Many, many, many different things happening on many, many, many different levels by many, many, many sons of God, Absolutely. given ability, authority over a great many things. Amen. You know, all these, I'll say it my way and then you guys will have to figure out what I'm really saying. All these hats that the Father has, okay, you're now this, you this is a, you're now this, um, I guess that's our, cr our crowns. This is what we've been called to in eternity. Amen. The thing with this, you guys have talked about many different aspects of the heavens and so on and so forth. And I see I see the Prototokos. Every time you mention it, that we're talking about the Prototokos, then, mm -hmm. then it just it feels evident. That's what you're talking about. And I can see in in motion, in the, in the Word, us doing what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But it's it's... Okay, you're doing that here, but over here you're doing something different. But it's all the same. But but you know, <laughs> that's plurality of existence. It just mm -hmm. it, it just boggles my mind. And who would believe it? You know? Yeah, that's that's the case. <laughs> who would? You're gonna oh, give it I to would. <laughs> you're gonna give it to. <laughs> they wouldn't believe it. Well, when they knock on my door and say, Amen. "God sent us, please give us," they're on their way. 